Hi guys, welcome back to IndyCar series. We're back with the master classes. As you can see, I managed to get gold on the advanced car control. It was actually quite easy in the end. So we have two more to do. Um, well, in fact, we have six more to do, but we're going to do two again this session. Uh, maximizing performance and qualification. Then, of course, we have racing techniques, the pits, caution period, and IndyCar series. So we're going to get into uh, the third of the master classes and maximizing performance. It's vital that your car is set up right and you're happy with the handling before each race. There is no point in having the fastest car on the track if it doesn't feel right and behaves erratically. It's more important that you have a car you feel comfortable and confident with. The only way you're going to get this right is to take the time to practice before each race. All the racetracks in Indy Racing League are oval, which would lead you to believe that they all drive the same, right? Well, not at all. They're all completely different. You need to set your car up right for each race if you're serious about competing at the highest level. For instance, did you know there are two different types of front and rear wing? We have one type for super speedways and Indianapolis 500, and the other type for short ovals. For the super speedways in Indy, the cars run with very little downforce as you can run flat out for most of the race. For short ovals, you need the increased downforce to get around the tighter corners faster. It's a fine balancing act. You could run with less downforce and go faster on the straightaways, but then you'd have to slow down a lot more for the corners. Basically, downforce is what helps stick your car to the track. It is produced by the aerodynamic shape of your car in the front and rear wings. You can increase and decrease downforce back in the garage by adjusting the angle of your front and rear wings. But be aware that at some tracks there is a minimum and maximum wing angle restriction, so you have to work within these constraints. And remember that while downforce is a good thing, helping maintain grip, the consequence is drag, which slows you down in the straightaways. And again, it's a balance. The only way you're going to get it right is to practice and make adjustments before the race. Another important reason for getting your setup right is your tires. Your tires are the most important part of your car, so you want to ensure that they last as long as possible. There's nothing worse than wearing your tires down too quickly and wrestling with your car until the next pit stop. To get maximum performance from each tire, you want the temperature across the surface of the tire to be consistent. The hotter your tires, the more grip you get, but they wear down faster. However, a consistent temperature means that the whole of the tire surface is coming into contact with the road and that the load across the tire is constant. This means the tire wear will be even, which gives you a much more controllable and predictable ride. To test your tire temperatures, run a few practice laps and then head back to the garage. Here you will find the temperature readings for all your tires. You can then use these readings to make your setup decisions. For instance, if the left side of the tire is hotter than the right side, then you should adjust the camber. Camber is the tilt or angle of the wheel in relation to the track. It is used to help maintain an even contact between the tire surface and the road. This helps to keep the temperatures across the surface of the tire constant. To balance the temperature across this tire, we need to add more positive camber. If the reverse were true, the right side of the tire being hotter than the left, we'd have to add more negative camber. You will know when your camber is right when the temperature reading for the tire is symmetrical. However, you still may not have an even temperature. If this is the case, you need to adjust the tire pressure. Say the outer edges of your tire are hotter than the center. This means that the tire is sagging, which means that the air pressure is too low, so we need to add more tire pressure. Likewise, if the temperature of the center of your tire was hotter than the outer edges, then your tire is overinflated, so we need to reduce the tire pressure. 
You can also use the method of running practice laps and then reading your tire temperatures to try to reduce the heat. Or to balance the load more evenly across the four tires by altering your suspension components to affect weight transfer. This will give you greater tire life, but you will lose some grip. Again, it's a fine balance. Okay, this car has been deliberately tuned down to produce a slower lap time than normal. Take it out for a couple of practice laps and then head for the garage. It's up to you to find out what's wrong with it and improve the setup so that you can beat the lap time. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You need to figure that out for yourself. The only clue I'll give you is that it's best to change only a few settings at a time. Don't steam in there and change everything at once, as it will be difficult to work out which setting affects what. Once you feel you're ready to give it a go, take the car out on the track. If you beat the slower lap time, you pass the test. It's that simple. Now this test is impossible to do if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I've spent so far about 45 minutes on this test alone and I still haven't got nowhere close so I've actually resorted to um, going on some forums to see what other people have done. So I'm going to try out some setups and see if they work. Hopefully they will. If not uh, then I don't know what to do but this test is one of the hardest to do on the actual game itself. So um, yeah I'll see you in the garage. Okay, so here we are in the garage, um, as you can see, um, well, it's just a total mess. So I've got my little phone with me, so I'm going to go through some of these settings as well. So apparently tire pressure for the front left should be set to about 35. Front right should be set to about 39. Uh, right left should be 41. How this is going to work, I have no idea, and 49 should be for the right rear. Okay, that's just one. The springs should be set to 60 for both front, left, and right. 75 for the rear. Good. And good. Uh, right, dampers next. They should be at 45 to 40. So, 45 to 40. Good. And I think it's the same as well. Yeah, 45 to 40 on the front right. Good. Right rear should be 60 to 45. Nice. And I think it's the same as well. Yeah, 60 to 45. God, this is this test is such a pain in my ass. Ride height should be... Uh, what's going on here? Ride height. Here we go. It says 2.2 on here, but I don't think that's correct. Um, okay, then, so I'll just... I don't know what to do on this. Uh, oh, I'll just put the ride height down to... 2 on each, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that'll do. I'll just, I'll just put it to 22 on each, because the settings... On this, actually, front right should be by that, yeah. And I don't know. Uh, that's a right height. That's right rear should be set to about that as well. Again, I don't know. I'm just using. <laughs> I've I've tried so many times on this already, and I've failed every single one of them. So I'm just going through what people are using in the forums uh, to try and uh, actually get this test done. Uh, so the wings, the front, why does it say front left and front right? I can't actually change the front left or right. Um, okay, we'll just leave it at that then, I guess. And rear should be down to one. I'm guessing that's what they're saying on here. That's really strange, you can't change the, the um... Oh well, I, I won't argue with it. All right, toe in should be... No, select toe in please, should be 2, and front right should be minus 2, like so. Uh, camber next, what should camber be? 0 0.3, oh come on select it, 0 0.3, yes, minus 6, 
or 0.6. For the right rear, it should be minus 6 as well. And that should be 0.3 as well. Good. So that's camber done. And the gears should be... Yeah, they're absolutely fine. But that is not all, because that is just the basic setup for Indianapolis. So now I have to go and find the strategy <laughs> for these bloody tests. So, um, right. Uh, da, 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 da. Pressure of your tire should be... Uh, what was it? Raise the pressure of your tires by one. So... Uh, I'm guessing every single one of them, so 36, 40, that should be set to 50, and 42, I'm guessing. Um, end by one for each of the four, and lower the front wing one, so that it shows zero. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So, front wing, we have to lower it so it's zero, which is, means it's going to have no downforce whatsoever. Um, set your gear to 231 and 242. Okay. Are you following all this? Because I bloody aren't. Aren't? Ain't. Ain't. I'm isn't. I isn't following this. And I'm bloody doing it. Uh, right, so that should be a 242. Good. Speed at 10,700 RPM. Good. Um, uh, reduce fuel to something... Okay, that's basically all it says. So reduce my fuel and then try that. So, uh, okay, reduce fuel to about eight laps, they say. Yeah, so about eight laps. Change tires. Okay, let's see how this works. It probably will end disastrously. Okay, so we've got control of the car again, and apparently I need to set the weight jacker up to the maximum, which I have done. And the car still feels very, very understeery. Still wants to go towards the wall, but that's alright. We'll do a couple of laps, warm the tires up, that should give us a bit more grip. So we've got to beat a time of 235 miles an hour. Okay, that does actually feel quite good, to be honest. No, it's going out towards the wall again. Bloody hell, this is daft. go into the wall. Luckily I didn't break anything, otherwise it would have been test over. Two twenty four. So 11 mile an hour is down on what we should be getting. Well, this is ridiculous. I'm not actually gaining any speed, and the car still wants to go towards the wall. So whoever they are on those forums trying to give us all this information, they're doing a really piss-poor job.
Yeah, look at that, the car just goes straight towards the wall. There's no way. Apparently you have to stay in sixth gear and just keep the throttling, but it doesn't work. Yeah, this is definitely one of the harder tests. I bet it's so simple. I bet someone is screaming at the monitor, or one of them, saying, you know, change this, change that, you know, but unfortunately, I have tried so many different variations to get past this bloody test, and every single one of them doesn't work at all, so... I think we're going to come back to this Three, one at a later two, date. One, go. We're going to come back to this one at a later time because this one I find is just completely impossible to do. And it's driving my head in. It really is. So we're going to do qualification next. Uh, maximizing performance. We can come back to that at a later time anyway. It's not. This isn't really important to the game itself. This is just getting gold, you know, learning the basics of the car. And it gives you trading cards, which you can unlock liveries and stuff, which I mentioned in the first video anyway. So, um, we'll go to qualification, see how well we do, and see if we can actually pass this one. Lessons 1 to 3 focused on car control and performance. This is where you start to put it into practice. Qualification is the first chance you get to gain an edge over your competitors. The better you qualify, the more chance you have in the race. But qualification is not just about where you start on the grid. You can also use the time to make sure you're comfortable with your car and its performance. You have two configurations, a qualification setup and a racing setup. When setting up your car for the race, you should be thinking long term. After all, you may have 200 laps to run. When setting your car for qualification, you've only got a few laps to run. So make your car as fast as you can. If you can handle it, run with as little downforce as possible. Take on just enough fuel to make it around and pump your tires right up. An overinflated tire will produce a smaller contact patch, so you'll get less rolling resistance with more speed. But remember that you have to start the race with the tires you qualified in, so you don't want them to deteriorate too much. The day begins with the draw. Drivers are drawn randomly for qualification order. Fisher has qualified. There's nothing you can do about the outcome, so sit tight and hope for a midday qualification run. Sharp has qualified. As the day progresses, the morning qualifiers lay down a nice coat of rubber and the track warms up. The extra rubber and warmer track will help your car to grip so you can go for a quicker run. Radon has qualified. Don't worry if you've drawn first, however. You can still get a good position and even the pole, but qualifying at midday gives you just a slight advantage. Ward has taken pole. When it's your turn to qualify, you start off in the pits. Bring your car up to speed gently and feed out from the warm-up lane onto the track. Once you pass the start line for the first time, your warm-up lap begins. Your qualifying run starts next lap. If you're not happy with the feel of the car on the warm-up lap, you can come into the pits and have your pit crew adjust your front wing, which can compensate for handling problems. Try adding a bit more front wing to increase downforce and counter an understeering car. And take off a little wing to decrease the downforce if your car's oversteering too much. Once your crew have made the adjustments, you can start your second and last qualification attempt. If you have any more handling problems, you'll have to use your weight jacker. Add weight to counter understeer and remove weight to alleviate oversteer. That's qualification in a nutshell. Okay, time for you to have a go at the normal qualification. Ease your car out of the pits and onto the track. Once you pass the start line, you've got one warm-up lap to get up to speed, and then go for it. You've got two laps to post your best time, and you need to successfully qualify to pass this test. 
Okay then, so gold over 230, silver 228, and bronze 226. Let's hope we don't have as many problems. Now easy on that throttle pedal. Don't spin. Yes, shut up. It doesn't matter because the computer controls us anyway. Uh, let's hope we don't have as many problems on this one as we did on the bloody techniques. Okay, right, let's try this then. Weight jacker all the way up and engine mode set to 7. And the car still handles like a bag of shit. And if you're wondering why the game is slightly having a bit of frame lag, it's because every single time my computer sits idly by and does nothing all day. And then as soon as I think, oh, I'll record something, it decides to load up a load of bullshit in the background, which is really goddamn annoying. So that's why we're getting a few frame skips, because my hard drive decided, oh yeah, I'm just going to download, you know, updates or load stuff. So, so far, it looks like we're beating the times. 240 mile an hour going into turn three. Nicely done. Can we get this done? Yay! Nice going, buddy. You took the pole. Gold medal. Gold medal indeed. Nice. So that is that one done, thankfully. We don't have to do it again. Uh, that racing, maximizing performance, though, that is really annoying me. That we can't do that one. It's just bloody impossible, almost impossible to do. Obviously, it isn't. Because, um, yeah, I've managed to get gold on that one before, you know, back in the day, but... It is just incredibly difficult to try and change everything and, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, oh, sod it, we'll do another one. Yeah, we'll do racing techniques, why not? Okay, you've had it easy up till now. <laughs> you aren't going to be racing around on your own. It's a race, and there are other drivers out there, and it's up to you to beat them. So how are you going to do that? Well, the first thing is to understand that you're not going to get anywhere in a race if you're not aware of the competition around you. To do this, you need to rely on your spotter. He'll let you know what's going on around you using the pit radio system. Car on your right side. You're clear. Car outside, outside, still there, still there. You're clear. Indy cars aren't like your average SUV. You don't have a lot of all-around vision, so you aren't going to see much of what's going on behind you. Besides, if you're not focusing on what's ahead of you, you aren't going to win. Worse still, you won't see if another car spins, and before you know it, bam, you're out of the race. Accidents occur all the time in Indy racing. Because there's no room for error out there when you're running wheel to wheel, three cars wide, at over 200 miles per hour. So listen to your spotter. He's your extra eyes and ears. If he says car low, then believe him. And don't swing across to the left, even if you can't see your opponent. Let's skip this race back a few laps before the crash to take a look. 
There are a couple of things to be aware of when battling against other cars. First up, drafting. Remember, when you're drafting, your car has less air to travel through and it can go faster. So drafting is the best way for you to overtake an opponent. Just make sure that you build up your speed before attempting that final overtaking maneuver because as soon as you pull out from behind the car you're drafting, you're back in clean air. Wow, that was a great maneuver. This guy used the momentum of the first overtaking maneuver to catch up and overtake the lead car. That was some nice driving. Now, Indy racing is highly competitive, but that doesn't mean we don't respect each other. This isn't stock car racing where you can bump draft or swap paint with the other cars. You aren't going to last long with that sort of driving in Indy cars. Look at the car on the left. He's got the inside line, so the guy on the outside will have to go around him. The inside car currently has the advantage as the inside line is the shorter way through the corner. By positioning your car like this, you'll be forcing your opponents to look for other ways around you while you can concentrate on keeping your speed up. Okay, let's recap. Listen to your spotter via the pit radio system. Be aware of the other cars. Keep your eyes on the road and plan what your next move is through the traffic up ahead. And when you're in the lead, make sure you take the fastest line. Stay in the groove and let the other guys worry about how they're going to get past you. Right. It's time we put you out there with the other competition. You're going to be placed mid-pack with only a few laps of the race left to run. I want you to try and finish as high up as you can. You need to finish higher up than you start to pass the test. So you need to overtake at least one of these guys to keep that position. Now that you're in a real race situation, you need to be careful and aware of the other cars. Listen to your pit radio and do not cause an accident. Okay then, so gain at least five places for the gold, gain three for the silver and one for the bronze, so it should be fairly simple. Okay, you ready? Sit tight. Here we go. Where's my spotter, damn it? Where's my bloody spotter? Just three cars to pass. I'll do that on the inside here. Fish, Bash, and Bosch. And just one more to go. I should be able to get past him fairly soon. Yeah, where the hell my spotter isn't around? I think he's having a smoke break or he's eating a hot dog or something. And there you go, got past all them, so that was easy. So we wanted five, so we've got the gold medal so far, we just have to keep it. Three laps to go. Oh no, he's coming up on the inside instead, oh, okay. I see what you're doing. No, 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 son of a bitch! You have failed this maths class. You were involved in an accident. Yes, I was. Sue me.
You blew them away. That was an amazing drive. That gets you the gold. Not too bad. I suppose I got gold. Um, so yeah, that is four golds out of five. Not too bad. It's just that maximizing performance one that has given us a bit of a headache. Um, but yeah, there you go. That one was incredibly easy compared to the maximizing performance one. So, um, yeah, next time then, um, I'll try and do the performance one off screen just to get it out of the way and get it out of my hair. Uh, so next time then we'll do the pits, caution period, and the IndyCar series to get those three done and dusted. And then we can actually get on and do the proper series and uh, see if we can actually put our training to use and actually win some races. So I will leave it here for now. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time for the third and final video of the Masterclass series. Thanks a lot and take care.